Well, greetings, church. And here we are again. Are you ready to be discipled as we continue in our leadership development and specifically talking about attitude? And the last we've been talking about has been failure and what that does to your attitude. And we're going to continue with that. And we are in the book of Philippians and we, Philippians 3, and we're going to be reading verses 12 through to 14 again as we did yesterday. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And we pray, Lord, that you would go before us and that you would surround us, Father, as we break bread. May it be found acceptable and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So how do you become a successful failure? John Maxwell talks about failing forward. And uh, I was reading this article the other day and, and, and a statement by Thomas A. Edison. He said this, I've not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Let me tell you this, church. Nobody likes to fail. But if we're honest, we understand that failure is indeed a part of life. There's no success without some amount of failure. Please understand this truth, church. There is no success without some amount of failure. Even great inventors like Thomas Edison experience a lot of failures on the way to a successful invention. Even the best players in any sport have experienced numerous failures. Even a Jack Collis has experienced a duck or two or three or four in his international career of cricket. Anyone pursuing a goal of value will make, will make mistakes and even indeed wrong decisions. So the key is to expect failure, to prepare for it, to be ready, to turn it into a lesson and a stepping stone to what? To success, of course. There is such a thing as successful failure. And these, these are some of the traits of such a person. Firstly, a person who, who is a successful failure, who just fails forward, number one, has optimism. They find the benefit in every bad situation. Remember Thomas Edison? He redefined the failures in his experiments as 10,000 ways that won't work. Hmm, that's interesting. He expected failure and he counted it as one of the costs of finding a way that would work. By finding the benefit in the failure, he was able to keep attempting something great. He didn't give up. Optimism is not limited to a few people as a personality trait. No, optimism is a is a choice. Optimism is a choice. And while it doesn't guarantee immediate positive results, it does result in higher motivation and indeed a stronger character. Are you optimistic? Secondly, those who have a wonderful, who, who, who can fall forward, who have a wonderful successful failure rate, take responsibility. They change their response to failure by accepting responsibility. When we fail at something, it's easy to blame someone or something else, isn't it? Maybe the circumstances or the people that we worked with, right? Failure is a learning opportunity. If I blame someone else, 
is a profound truth. I'm just cheating myself out of that lesson. If I blame someone else, I'm just cheating myself out of that lesson. Responsibility is more important than reputation. And it tends to lead to reward. Which of course in turn can lead to more responsibility. Are you willing to take responsibility? Because it marks you as someone who is mature and can be trusted to learn from failure and keep trying. The third character trait is resilience. The ability to move on from failure is a key trait to continuing to attempt great things. The mind can only focus on so much. So if we're still too focused on what we did wrong, what does that say? We can't give all of our attention, attention to attempting to do things right. Here are five behaviors of people who haven't gotten over past difficulties. Well, number one, comparison. Either measuring your failures against those of others or convincing yourself that your circumstances were harder than theirs. Rationalization. Telling yourself and others that you have good reasons for not getting over past hurts and mistakes. Boy, don't we do that good. We rationalize. And believing that those who we encourage you just don't understand. Thirdly, isolation. Pulling back. Keeping yourself separate from others. Avoiding dealing with the issues. Or continuing to feel sorry for yourself. We do that well too, don't we? Regret. Fourth, regret. We, we get stuck on, on complaining or crying about trying to fix things that cannot be changed. And finally, bitterness. Forever feeling like a victim and blaming others for the, for the unfavorable outcomes. And we just love to do that. And then our fourth point and final one for today, initiative. Initiative. That character trait of of people that are successful in falling forward. When we make mistakes and then consider trying again, we all feel some measure of fear, facing the unknown, right? We can easily come up with a list of things to worry about. But yes, the challenge, church, the act of worrying doesn't help us at all in accomplishing our goals. Corrie ten Boom said this, Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. So just believing that failure can be good isn't enough to help us succeed. We need to act on that belief and take a step forward again as we pursue the dream. Only then do we learn from our mistakes and make progress. So successful failure is a failure that we respond to correctly by finding the good, by taking responsibility, by moving on, and by taking action. How do you respond to failure? Which of those, these four points, would you benefit from? If you had to adopt in your life. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate that there was only one perfect person in this world, and that was Jesus. And Father, we do, we do pray, Lord, that you'll help us find the good. That we'll be able to take responsibility. Help us, Father, in moving on. That we can, we can be resilient. That we can say goodbye to yesterday. And then, Father, we want to take action. And face our fears. And, Father, we're very mindful today, as we've been in all these days of lockdown. We're mindful of the 
the reality of the fear that is overwhelming people. And Father, perhaps even to our era today. The fear of the unknown. Father, we pray. We pray that we'll be able to face our fears. And that we'll, we'll step forward. And that we'll take action. And that we'll trust you, Lord. And so we thank you, Lord, that in Jesus' name we can press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen.